Hi, TF2 trading is pretty huge. Like, really, really huge. Just look at all this trading. You know, you got your keys refined, your scrap, buds. Ah! 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 But more importantly, you have a marketplace to actually trade those items within. And what better marketplace is there than trade underscore Minecraft underscore Neon underscore V63 underscore Xmas? Hm? Now, though, my point is that TF2 trading maps are weird and that they can be pretty much whatever the map maker wants. And when anyone on the internet can choose anything in the world that they want, most of the time it's Minecraft. And thus, trade Minecraft maps have become very popular. This one especially, Trade Minecraft Neon made by Neon Heights. Another popular trade map variant is Trade Plaza, a format of trade map to be as simple as possible, with very little more than two spawn rooms and one big fighting room. But what if you didn't want to follow any trends or categories? What if you wanted to take pure, unbridled entropy and chaos and completely squeeze it out into a trade map? What if you somehow took the most incomprehensible meshes of media and turned it into something rancid? Something horrible? Something... almost insane? yet beautiful. So today I'm going to be talking about some train maps made by a user known as Khan. In particular, three maps of theirs. Those three maps being Trade House of Chaos, Trade House of Chaos 2, and Trade Connie. The reason I chose these maps is because that I believe they share a certain <clears throat> aesthetic feel. Covering and analyzing them is very different than almost any other map there is in TF2, because I can't just run through them linearly and look at things one by one. Instead, I'll just turn my little peanut brain into high gear and try to do some artistic analysis on these maps, trying to decipher what this soup of internet juice may actually mean. To do this, we're going to have to look towards a map known as Trade Abstract, one of Khan's earlier maps, released during the Birth of Society, or as most know it, 2011. This map of Khan's was the first to pioneer this abstract aesthetic that I'll be grinding away at today. At the time of this map's release, this kind of style was pretty much unprecedented, and understandably it was quite a hit. Filled with memes, flashing lights, and obscure music thrown around everywhere, it was pretty much everything that anyone in the early 2010s could have asked for. I'll try to show off some of the more common tropes in all these maps to try and make things a bit more tangible. First up on the chopping block are what I call meme portraits. These are various memes from anywhere on the internet, screen caps from shows or games, and glaciations all hung up on the walls like a museum. Because. The second, uh, aesthetic trope thing are grid lines. I don't know, it's just the textures thrown onto the walls of tons of areas. And I figured they were noteworthy just because of their presence everywhere. Just keep a lookout, I guess. Finally, and much more importantly, actually, are the layouts of the maps themselves. The style that I've dubbed as room-based. It largely refers to how almost the entirety of these maps are essentially just a series of different rooms with varying themes, all connected together through doors or hallways, as you can see from the map shots here. To maybe give you a better idea of how this style works, I'll go through a bit of the House of Chaos, starting with the first room, which also functions as the red spawn, the flag room. Heading through the door here leads to the palm tree room, from there you end up in the rainbow stair room, and then the rainbow space junction place thing, which leads to four more rooms, and so on and so forth. This style of level creation basically gives the map creator full creative freedom, as each room is almost entirely independent from all the others. No consistent pattern or aesthetic needs to be held. All these little pan shots you see on screen right now are from the same map. With almost every room, it almost constantly begs the player to ask the question, what am I even looking at? Is there some kind of pattern we're missing? Does the layout of the map spell something? Is this all hopeless? Is anything even real? Do I even need to exist? Well, we need to take a second to remember what game we're playing. This isn't just a series of rooms placed into an empty world. I mean, we're playing Team Fortress 2, running around the space with upwards of 31 other players in this complete mosh pit of textures and solids. So, how does the map function in the context of the game, then? Well, this is the starting area of the map, with red spawn on the left and blue spawn on the right there. And where's every single other thing in the map? Right down there in that hole in the middle. <laughs> this means that this single area is the main fighting space in this map. Pretty weird, right? Well, really, pretty weird has been the descriptor for nearly every part of these maps so far, so the gameplay following suit is only to be expected, honestly. So then, by this point in the video, it's likely difficult to understand the layouts of these meme hellscapes, but that's really to be expected, and is what I believe to be the spirit of it. 
not about finding a method to the madness or fully understanding everything. It's just about having a good time with whatever the hell you have around you. And with that said, let's get back to the creator themselves, Khan. It must be said and recognized that they themselves are an incredibly talented map maker with a plethora of unique maps listed on the Gamer Nana page, almost all of which being met with very strong reception. Something especially of note is their Psychopath series of maps. A few different versions of them have been released for the trade and death run community game modes. They do a very good job of showing off Khan's ability to make great looking maps, these ones giving off a pretty unsettling feeling with the black and white color scheme and spooky visuals everywhere. Two other maps to mention are Trade What and Trade Abstract 2. The latter being a recreation of the original Trade Abstract, but with a few changes to some rooms and a few new areas. Meanwhile, Trade What is its own map, smaller and very similar in style to House of Chaos and other previously discussed maps. Finally, there's only one more map I'd like to discuss, one that I personally believe to be their magnum opus, Trade Apadial. Yeah, this map is really looking pretty. <laughs> Heavily inspired by one of Hat and Time's beta levels, Heroes Challenge, this level is very different than any other map covered earlier. Rather than a room-based format consisting of several themes, a patio is a large single area with a theme that I'm probably not smart enough to put a name to, but you get the gist of it. What I can say is that holy fucking shit is it really good looking. Something about those rainbow goo windows, those little lamp tree looking things, and that giant little bee in the background, it just takes every single box for me. I'm not going to talk about everything, but instead I'll absolutely recommend that you check out this map for yourself and take a good look around, since there's a lot more to this map once you really examine it. I'll throw the link to this map's game banana page where you can download it along with the other maps in the description. So, why did I make this video? I mean, I spent like the first two thirds of the video diving into specific aesthetics and patterns throughout some of Khan's maps, but really the only conclusion I could ever get to was, I don't know man. But I'll just play hipster and say that that's probably all part of it. Maybe there is some kind of deeper meaning embedded in these memescapes, maybe I'm overlooking a single detail that reveals the whole thing, but in reality I wouldn't bet on it. What I can bet on though is that these maps are some of the most unique and fascinating meshes of internet content that I've ever come across. Something about the way all these completely unrelated, often obscure pieces of content blend together, there isn't anything else like it that I've seen. So go run around these maps, maybe you'll see for yourself, or maybe this is just an incredibly niche hyperfixation of mine that I've impulsively decided to make a video about and this whole time I've sounded nothing short of insane. Which is honestly pretty fair. <laughs> and on one final much more important note, Khan, if you're watching this, I am really goddamn sorry that I have no idea how to pronounce your name. Oh wow, you actually watched the whole thing. Damn. Um, I've never made a video like this. Uh, it's weird as hell. <laughs> you even like, like I'm recording the audio for this in a car, in a garage, just on my own in the front seat, just hanging out, you know, just chilling with a microphone in my hand and my tablet on my little lap there. But uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, I really appreciate everyone making it to this point because I don't know how this video is going to do. I've never made anything even close to this before. The only content creation I've done is like for memes and stuff and streams. And streams, got it, is very different from making a video. So uh, if you did like it a lot and you want to show other people, please do it. I'd appreciate it a lot. I put a good amount of work into this. I pretty much taught myself Premiere Pro and threw a bunch of stuff together until it stuck. <laughs> But, um, yeah, no, I really appreciate it. Um, I got a stream. I'll throw that in the description. Check me out when I'm live and stuff. Twitter, YouTube, um, MySpace. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, um, I don't know. I'll be seeing you. Thanks for watching.